everyone welcome back to cyber secure tv uh, so this week we're gonna talk about the bypassing the xss filter now all of us we probably know that uh, mostly like you know cross site scripting occurs when we put something at the payload and it gets reflected back into the user uh, response or browser right so now the thing is not always the the headers or the input parameters are the place where you can inject a payload there are certain other uh, areas where you can inject this payload and and then then obviously you can uh, one way one thing you can trigger the cross site scripting vulnerability but then also you can use this uh, uh, insert points to bypass the filters which and WAF which they are not looking at so one of that first place is the data URI now this is possibly ignored by the pen testers most of the time uh, I, haven't, I haven't seen enough pen testers like you know looking at the data URI as a, as, as a potential injection point while exploiting the cross-site scripting. Uh, the good thing, the use for this data URI is you can embed the binary data within the HTML page. So imagine you are a developer and uh, you you are you are putting together an HTML page which takes about like you know uh, three seconds to load because it has got like you know it has to go to the server to fetch certain images and files and etc what if you can include those as an inline to the uh, to the request um, so that way it becomes very easier and faster for the page to load and that's what the efficiency we're gonna utilize as a pen tester to exploit the cross-site scripting now let me open up this page, uh, which explains the data URL or URI uh, bit in detail. So data URLs are composed of four parts, a prefix, MIME type, indicating the type of the data, and optional base64 token, and the data itself, right? So this is their, their format. Now, usually like, uh, if, if let me go back to our slide and I can show you. So header data is something that we always saw, right? Content type is optional. So you can say if it's image or base64 option uh, is something if you want to base64 encode and then data is the actual PNG file or the, uh, from our perspective, it's an attack vector. So that is where I, I would put my attack or payload uh, to hopefully hoping that it will be accepted by the application. So the decoded payload will look like this, but when you encode this base64 payload, it will become like this. And of course you can use the burp decoder or there are just so many tools out there to encode or decode the payloads. You put that into this attack vector uh, or, or the page that we just saw here, right? And this is, this is some of the sample uh, uh, request or values. Like here it says, hello world, but of course, you can re replace that uh, uh, this part with the script alert, and and most of the filters or WAF will not be paying attention to this this data URI, and then you can inject that, and and that might get you the cross site scripting vulnerability. And I don't think so. Uh, many scanners also uh, is looking at it. So like if you're running some scans, it might not automatically detect it. It might flag that the application is using data URI, but it might not actually try that. So something to pay attention during the fingerprinting of the application. Uh, the next trick or tip is about the HTML comments. Now, the good thing about the browser is it adds the two dashes. If you forget, like during the HTML page or like in the HTML uh, response while rendering. Now that's that could work in our favor if we use it wisely. So what if like, you know, I inject a payload uh, uh, with like this. So it's going to add two, da two dashes, uh, assuming like, okay, this is part of the comment, but actually it's not this image string or the entire payload. It's still an uh, cross-site scripting or, or HTML tag, which can be executed. So uh, that way it will make, even though this is not an actual payload when we insert it, uh, the browser will make it work. Next thing, you can also close a comment in an attribute. So uh, when this, this like browser when sees it, it, it will say like, oh, the double dash is missing. It will insert the double dash 
and then it will treat all of this as an actual uh, HTML tag which will obviously trigger the cross-site scripting right so sometime HTML comments are a way to exploit uh, this vulnerability a third interesting way of doing this is via C data. Now, before we dive in, let's look at what the C data is. So, in the XML document or external entity, C data section is a piece of element content that is marked up to be interpreted literally as a textual data, not as marked up content. A C data section is merely an alternative syntax for expressing character data. There is no semantic difference between character data in C data section and character data in a standard syntax where for example this and m person are represented by lt and m person respectively right so this is the c data syntax so whenever you see this probably there is an opportunity for you to insert the payload uh, to the application to the request uh, so all the character enclosed between these two sequences are interpreted as a characters not markup right uh, the start and the and end sender tags are interpreted as markup. However, this code is equivalent to this, right? So this is how. Uh, now, one thing to note is, uh, let's go back to that presentation. So here, uh, this is the one example, right? Like where you can insert this, and obviously you can use this uh, closing code and and then to evade the filter. The only thing is this might not work in the modern browser but if you have some enterprise application which are running on the legacy browsers this might still be useful and that's what i've, I've experienced uh, in the past as well uh, this payload had worked for me when i was testing like you know on ie6 or uh, some some very older version of chrome and firefox but this can also let you like you know filter uh, bypass the server side filter if not the WAF. Uh, the fourth, fourth way of doing this is using the VBS script. Um, now, until now, I think cross-site scripting, whenever someone say, uh, someone mentions the word, uh, you will always think about the JavaScript because that's what the cross-site scripting is all about. Uh, but VB script is equally important, although it's not used by all the, rendered by all the browsers, but mostly IE and few other browsers does use it. And sometimes, uh, because it is not a case sensitive, it is even easier. Like you don't have to always say like, e, uh, like you know, uh, certain uh, certain keywords like a script, or we'll we'll see one of the function which is uh, which is document or write. You can put in caps, you can put it in small letters, and this can easily allow us to bypass the filter because it's case case insensitive. Now you can also inject like a script, like an entire script where it says script type, baby script, and then if name is equal to this, then document, blah, blah, blah. Or you can also put it as one line, like what we have done, image SRC, right? Instead of alert, you can say like dot message box. And then you can also access the DOM elements, uh, which you can use with the process scripting which is our eventual goal of like you know stealing the session cookie or doing the key log or activity and stuff like that eval in javascript is equal to exec script execute the script in the vb script right so and and one another uh, interesting thing is vb script uh, supports multiple language so you can also mix it for example if you see here you can declare as a type VB script. However, in the code, you can actually use the JS and then you can execute the script code. So it is possible you can mix and match different script, uh, which will obviously allow you to bypass uh, some of the filters. So these are some uh, ways like, you know, I have learned uh, myself, like from my experience in the past, which I want to share with you. Uh, I'm sure like you might have also learned a few ways to bypass the cross-site scripting filters, WAF rules. So uh, please share uh, if there are any, I would be happy to learn and I'm sure everyone else will be happy to learn. And also, uh, if you have any questions on any of this, uh, feel free to drop it in the comment. Uh, if I'll, I'll, I'll try my best to respond to it. 
uh, and hopefully someone else will also be able to respond to your questions uh, but that's it uh, from this week uh, for this week um, if you have any questions as i said like always uh, drop me a comment and uh, don't forget to like and subscribe and i'll see you all next week bye